I want to encourage you to turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, we've been studying some lessons, lessons from a father to his son. And I'm kind of glad that the son isn't identified. We know that the father is Solomon, but I'm glad that the son isn't identified because that means the son could be any one of us. And uh, we, we're in the fourth lesson this morning, and the lesson is called Don't Despise Discipline. Don't Despise Discipline. And you say, what a terrible subject, discipline, to talk about on, on Valentine's Day, Pastor Tim. Get your act together. Well, you're going to find out that discipline is a good topic to talk about on Valentine's if you listen carefully. So I'm going to invite you to do that. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 to 20. But before I read that, I want to ask or tell you something about something I've been reading. I've been reading some history about my family. And uh, before I tell you a story that I read, I want to tell you, do not uh, despise discipline makes me think of this statement. No one likes to be disciplined. Is that true? Anybody say, yeah, that's me? No one likes to be disciplined. Now to the story. I was reading this story about my father's uncle. And my father, my father's uncle was kind of a little rascal. And uh, he went away and did some fishing. And his father told him to be home at a specific time. And he decided that he didn't have to be home at that time. So he and his brother got in trouble, and uh, his father found out where they were, and he went to find them, and uh, he, he was angry, and he was going to discipline them. He says, get back home right now, or you're going to be in big trouble. And uh, he realized that he could, my uncle realized that he could run faster than his brother. And his brother was close to his father, so his brother was the first one to be punished. Meanwhile, my uncle beelines on the way home, and he knows he's going to get a spanking. Kids, you can ask your parents what a spanking is. It's an old-fashioned way of punishment. And he knew he was going to get a spanking. So he found some towels in the drawer, and he padded his rear end with some towels thinking that would make his, his punishment a little bit less. And his father comes home, and sure enough, the stick comes out, and his father paddles him, and then after he paddles him, he finds out the towel sticking out under his belt. And the father couldn't help but just laugh because of what a silly boy he has. Nobody likes being disciplined. But isn't it true that we all need discipline from time to time? Solomon told his son not to despise the Lord's discipline. And I want you to know that what, when we read this lesson, this lesson contains a variety of literary forms. It begins with a word of instruction much like the fives that we studied last week. Then it includes a poem about wisdom. That's kind of like what we read in chapter 1, verse 20 to 33. And finally, it includes a statement about creation. And at the first time when I read this passage, I scratched my head and I wondered to myself, how do all these different literary forms relate to each other. But if you'll listen carefully, and if you'll think with me about it, I think you will find out that they relate to each other very well. So with that introduction, I want to read for you from Proverbs chapter 3, starting with verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his re 
rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. By wisdom the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge the watery depths were divided, and the clouds let drop the dew. May God bless this reading of his word. The first thing that I want us to notice is the first part, verses 11 and 12. The Lord's discipline is an expression of his love. Now, I've, I've heard people say this. I, in fact, I think I remember hearing my dad say it. I discipline you because I love you. And... Uh, Sometimes I believed it, and sometimes I had a hard time believing it. <laughs> yeah, sure, Dad, I wish you loved somebody else. <laughs> but really, we can have a negative attitude towards the Lord's discipline, and we can miss the fact that the Lord is showing us that he loves us. Chuck Swindoll once said that the opposite of love is not hatred. And I thought, what is he saying? The opposite of love is not hatred, he said. It is apathy. He doesn't care. And if you, and if you don't care about somebody, you won't care if they do right or wrong either. But if you love somebody, if you care about them, you'll want them to go the right way, and you won't want them to go the wrong way. And this is what Solomon is trying to get our attention about in verses 11 and 12. The Lord's discipline is an expression of his love. Solomon gave a word of instruction in verse 11. This instruction is a warning. We need to avoid a negative attitude towards the Lord's discipline. Look what he says. Do not despise the Lord's discipline. In other words, don't say, oh, I hate this. I don't like it when the Lord disciplines me. Don't have that kind of attitude. And then he goes on to say, do not resent his rebuke. Now, if you look back to chapter 1, the poem about Lady Wisdom, in uh, verse 23, uh, Lady Wisdom says, Repent at my rebuke. That means when you get rebuked, change your mind. Change your attitude towards things. Then look at verse 25. Uh, you disregarded all my advice. You did not accept my rebuke. And then again, verse 30, since you did not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, Solomon is saying, don't be like this. Don't despise, don't be antagonistic to the Lord's discipline. Why? Then Solomon gave a word of, of motivation. The motivation is an encouragement. We need to think about the Lord's discipline as an expression of his love. The Lord disciplines those he loves. That means if you don't get disciplined by the Lord, 
that's a bad sign that the Lord doesn't love you. That would be horrible. If you got the impression that the Lord didn't love you, but the Lord does love you, and because of his love for you, he will discipline you from time to time. He will take you to the woodshed because you've done wrong and you need to be aware of the fact that you've done wrong and that you need to change your ways. The Lord disciplines those he loves. Just as a father disciplines the son he delights in. So if you feel like you're under the Lord's discipline this morning, cheer up, because it shows how much He loves you. Discipline is a Valentine Day gift from the Lord to you. Don't go the wrong way, turn around and go the right way. Now, how does this instruction relate to the poem about wisdom that follows? I've read many commentaries, and some scholars don't think it relates. So they connect verses 11 and 12 to the, to the verses that we read last week, verses 1 to 10. And they say that uh, starting at verse 13, it's a totally different section. But the words, my son in verse 11, indicate that this is a new lesson. As we look through, throughout the verses, or chapters 1 to 9. So I would like to suggest to you that appreciating the Lord's discipline, that doesn't mean you have to like it, but appreciating the Lord's discipline helps us to find wisdom. Can I say that again? Appreciating the Lord's discipline, knowing that He does it because He loves us, helps us to find wisdom. Wisdom is portrayed as a character who needs to be found. Look at verse 13 to 18. The person who finds wisdom is blessed. And the blessing is stated in verse 13. Blessed are those who find wisdom. It's interesting when you look at it because verse 13, the, the, the poem starts with the word blessed. And if you go down uh, to verse 18, the poem ends with the word blessed. Do you see that at the end of verse 18? So it's a poem that begins and ends with blessing. The blessing is stated, blessed are those who find wisdom, all the joy, all the happiness, all the well-being of the person who finds wisdom. Why? Blessed are those who gain understanding. The idea that is that many of us are without understanding. We don't know what God wants us to do. We don't know His will and we don't know His ways. But when we find wisdom, wisdom leads us to understand God's will and God's word and God's ways. Then the reason for this blessing is given in verse 14 to 18. This lady wisdom has characteristics. Verse 14, she is profitable. She is more profitable than silver, and she yields better returns than gold. There was a craze just a few years ago, it might still be going on, there was a craze that you need to buy silver, because silver has the potential of rising very high in the markets. Well, one of my friends bought silver, he, and he bought silver bullion in these little, uh, bars. And he said that was his retirement uh, savings in silver bars. Well then silver didn't do all that well recently. But the idea was that silver was valuable. And the idea is that gold is extremely profitable. 
But what Solomon is saying is, you think silver is valuable. You think gold is valuable. Wisdom is even more valuable than silver and gold. Not only is she profitable, she is precious. Look at verse 15. She is more precious than rubies. Rubies are, are an exceptional, beautiful jewel. A beautiful red jewel. Kind of reminds us of Valentine's. But wisdom is more precious than this beautiful jewel that we call rubies. Nothing you desire, and think about all the desires you've had in your life, nothing you desire can compare with wisdom. So if she is profitable, she is precious, she has many benefits. Look at verse 16. Long life is in her right hand. We've read this before. God says that if you attain to his wisdom, you will live longer on this earth because you will know better how to live your life according to the way God wants you to live. Long life is in her right hand. But look at her left hand. Riches and honor are in her left hand. God blesses the person that seeks after his wisdom. So we found out so far, far that she is profitable, she is precious, she has many benefits, but look at verse 17, she is pleasant. Her ways are pleasant ways, and her paths are peace. If you get to know God's wisdom, if you live the way God wants you to live, you will live a good life, a pleasant life, a way that a life that gives you the kind of peace that God wants to shed into your life, in your personal relationships, into your relationship with God, into all of your life. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths are peace. And then look at verse 18. She is a tree of life. She gives life to those who take hold of her. Do you remember the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? Do you remember there were tree, two trees that God told them about? One was the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, and they weren't supposed to eat from its fruit, but they did. And the other tree was what tree? The tree of life, right? And God kicked them out of the Garden of Eden because they were not to eat from the tree of life and what? Live forever. Well, verse 18 is alluding to that tree in that garden and saying, wisdom is like the tree of life. If you take hold of wisdom, you will live forever. And those who hold fast to her will be blessed. How does this poem relate to the statement which follows? Well, the personification of wisdom is a poetic device. In reality, wisdom is a characteristic or an attribute of God himself. Look what it says in verses 19 and 20. Wisdom is described as a characteristic of the Lord. By wisdom, he used that characteristic of his personality. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. We have many scientists who speculate about the origin of the earth. One question that most scientists are not able to answer satisfactorily is this question, were you there? Because no scientist alive today was there when earth was created. But the Lord was there. The Lord was there when he created the earth and made its foundation. 
And by wisdom, the Lord used the attribute of wisdom to do it. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. And it is really only God who knows what he did at the formation of the earth. And it is only God who knows the spread of creation. He has chosen to reveal what he did in the first chapter of Genesis. But apart from the first chapter of Genesis, we don't know because we weren't there. By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding he set the heavens in place. By knowledge the watery depths are divided and the clouds let their dew drop. In other words, God is bigger than we are. God understands more than we do. God has the attribute of wisdom. And while it is true that Solomon is using a personification when he talks about Lady Wisdom being a woman, the fact is that that's a poetic device and in reality Lady Wisdom is just a characteristic or an attribute of our great Lord and God. So what's all this say when we put it up together? Number one, we should not despise the Lord's discipline because it leads us to find his wisdom. And wisdom is an attribute of the Lord. Therefore, by discipline, the Lord is bringing us closer himself. Isn't that where we want to be? Closer to the Lord? Yeah. And the tool that God uses to bring us closer to himself is the tool of discipline. That's why Solomon says, don't despise the Lord's discipline, embrace it. Because when the Lord is disciplining you, he is drawing you closer to himself. I read about a lady who said, when my kids do wrong, I give them a good licking. And then I grab them and give them a good hug. That's the way the Lord treats us. He'll give us a good licking when we need it. But he grabs us and gives us a big hug. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. Some of us have felt that the last year, do you realize that it's been a year since we've struggled with this virus called the coronavirus and this pandemic that we've been under? It's a whole year already. <clears throat> and some of us have wondered if the Lord isn't disciplining us, just think about what God is teaching us about the value of being together. We haven't been together in this building for a long time. And I've missed it. I mean, you can blame me and say, well, you made the rule that we can go. No, I didn't make the rule that we can go in here. I was following the rules that I was given. I've missed being in here with you. And some of us have honestly wondered if our going through this difficult year hasn't been experiencing the discipline of the Lord. And the Lord has brought clear to me that I appreciate being together with my brothers and sisters more than ever before. 
Maybe I took that for granted. I appreciate being, to, being able to sing his praises more than ever before. Maybe I took that for granted. And maybe it's time for us to say, Lord, we've been complaining and we've been griping about this which we thought was your discipline. And instead of griping and complaining about it, we should have embraced it and said, Lord, you're showing us that you still care. You're showing us that you love us. You're trying to wake us up before it's too late. And Lord, if this is your way to do it, we want to respond to you in obedience and love. We want to say yes to you and to your discipline. We don't want to despise it. We don't want to reject it. We want to accept it and respond to it in the same love in which it was given. I don't know where you are this morning, but I just want to give a very simple invitation. And the invitation is, if you feel that God is drawing you closer to Him, even in the midst of using discipline to do it, and you want to draw closer to the Lord this morning, would you simply stand where you are? Lord, <clears throat> you see our response. We want to draw closer to you. We want to give you a big bear hug, if that were possible. And we say, Lord, teach us to respect and appreciate your discipline of us. Help us not to despise it. Help us to seek after your wisdom. And in seeking after your wisdom, help us to seek you. Cleanse us from our evil ways and draw us closer to you. And that will be the best Valentine present that we could ever receive. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us enough to discipline us and to bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.